Tonight on TNT from Indianapolis Raceway Park, Midas presents NASCAR Busch Series Racing. It's the Kroger 200 that has 34 laps to go. And kind of a rough and rugged night here off the start. Todd Bodine in the 92 gets caught in a case of somebody in front of him not going. Gets bumped by Randy LaJoy. He would continue. Just went one lap down. Big pile up, lap 60. Ron Hornaday hits Shane Meal. By the time it's done, six cars are involved down inside turn one. Mike Harmon, Kevin Grubb was in it, Hermie Sadler, Kevin LePage, Kerry Earnhardt, Hank Parker Jr. Took a big end of it, too. Lap 79, the Sauter brothers, Tim and Jay, caught up with Ashton Lewis in turn one. A three-car accident. And the big story of the race after Jason Keller led in the early going, a problem on a pit stop, cost him track position, allowed championship rival Greg Biffle and that car, the 10 of Scott Riggs, to get by. And they hold those positions on the speedway now with Riggs leading Biffle and Keller. You see Ricky Hendrick in the five car trying to get by Ron Hornaday. That's the battle for the ninth position. Ricky Hendrick was a lap down at one point. Got it back, coming to a caution flag. And now he's chipping away. Started 36th, BP. Got him a top 10 run going right now. He did a terrific job tonight for Ricky. Made several pit stops, the first caution flags. And Hornaday, the caution flag is out, speaking of cautions. Got a car up against the wall in turn three. It's Bobby Hamilton, Jr. Looks like he stopped, uh, well, no, he didn't stop to bring out the yellow. He's got problems. That's a big problem right there. Yeah, big time problem. Yep. Seventh place in points. Hamilton Jr. And with only 30 laps to go in the race, chances to repair that and get about time for the finish might be slim. And when that right front tire doesn't roll, that's <laughs> not a good sign. No. Sparks are flying at the racetrack on a Saturday night. And Biffle and the 57 car are on pit road. Scott Riggs stays out. Wow, this is going to be some kind of strategy. Second and third, going to come get some tires. 12 cars on the lead lap. Good call, not good call. Oh, only 30 laps to go. What do you think, Tony? I don't know. They they must not be happy with their cars. They must think that they can make a big enough adjustment to, to get through the crowd here. But there's with only those two guys pitting, they've got a lot of race cars to pass in a short amount of time. Go ahead, Glenn. Well, Greg Biffle and Jason Keller are pitting next to each other. They both brought their cars in, and you're exactly right, Tony. They didn't like the way their cars were. They couldn't catch Scott Riggs, and so they figured they might as well roll the dice, put on four fresh tires, thinking that they could make the time back up, that they had enough time. Biffle is down and away. Four tires on Keller's car. He's down and away. Here's Ralph. Well, Johnny Sauter is in in the two car. They made a very slight adjustment to the air pressure in the right rear of the car just to get the car a little bit better handling. Outside of that, they're very happy with the performance of the car. Crew thrill with the pit stop. Johnny Sauter, Kenny Wallace, Ron Hornaday, Jamie McMurray, other lead lap cars who came in to pit under this yellow. I applaud Keller and Biffle on this decision. I mean, I like to see guys that are aggressive. They're racing to win. They're not racing for the points. I mean, as much as they're racing each week for points, tonight, these guys want to win. They're not sitting there satisfied with running second, third, or second, and fourth. They're going for the win. So I applaud their decision to do this. Very, very good. That was impressive. Those guys would give up. Going for the championship would give up that track position, possibly, and get those four fresh tires and trying to win. It's going to put Biffle back to sixth and Keller to seventh for the restart. Behind leader Scott Riggs and four others. 28 laps to go at IRP. We've just gone back under the green flag in the Kroger 200 at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Scott Riggs leads. Scott Wimmer is second. John Wood third. Tony Raines fourth. Ricky Hendrick is fifth. Those cars did not pit under the yellow. Then Greg Biffle, Jason Keller, Johnny Sauter, Kenny Wallace, Ron Hornaday, and Jamie McMurray are the rest of the lead lap cars with fresh tires. We went green with 25 to go. And I'll tell you what, Scott Wimmer in that 23 car is running extremely well right now. Closed up right on the back bumper of Scott Riggs in the 10. Keep an eye on Biffle and Keller trying to come through the traffic. There's Biffle all the way at the bottom of the racetrack to deal with some of the lap cars. They just made contact with the Brian Vickers number 40 cars. They're three wide off two. Jason Keller on the inside of three wide. Now Biffle is the next car in front of him, that 33 that he'll come up on next is the fourth place car. So Biffle's up to fifth. And you see Keller lost a little ground trying to shake through the same traffic.
Biffle on range for fourth. Trouble on the backstretch. Ron Hornaday spinning. Caution flag is out. Larry Boyce, the other car involved. This is definitely not what Biffle and, and Keller wanted to see for sure. They wanted to see this thing go to where the fresh tires can come in and really get going and keep a lot of heat in Scott Riggs car. Well, Biffle got to uh, fourth. Keller's in six. Yeah, Keller did not clear Tony Reigns before the yellow came out. Both cars involved in the accident have driven away. Should not be a long caution. Make, make a quick trip of one of the cleanup trucks to check for debris. Let's see if we can see what happened. You know, all we see is a couple of cars going around making smoke. It looked like Hornaday spun when he ducked to the inside around Larry Foyt and got in the grass. On board the Net Zero onboard camera. Let's see. Wow. What do you see there, Tony? Looked like the 26 just got in the left rear of the 14 from that view. Got them both sideways and drove them both to the bottom of the racetrack down the back stretch. We definitely have some damage to that right front fender, but I don't know many cars this race here tonight that don't have damage. But uh, <laughs> Yeah. I said there were 172 clean fenders at the start of the night. How many think don't have a mark on them now? About 12? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Look at it. There's Kevin LePage's car. Do you actually count that as a fender or no fender now? No fender. That's no fender. So that, that's a damaged fender because it's sitting in a scrap heap in the infield somewhere. Does it have to be present to be accounted for, though? <laughs> it, it is present still. <laughs> Where? It's, it's in the junk pile in the looks, infield. I'm it looks like you. a NASCAR modified right now. It does. <laughs> no, NASCAR modified is prettier than that. That's true. That is very true. Now, there's one with four clean fenders. They have the tires to hold on for the win. Let's find out what his crew chief thinks. Here's Glenn. I'll ask that question, Harold Holly. Your strategy was to stay out. Your closest competitors came in, took four fresh tires. Can you hold on to that lead? I think so. Uh, we uh, Historically, what happens here is right at the end of the race, you want to be up front. Cautions start popping out about every five laps, and you get your tires, get your tires to cool back down. He picked up uh, in that long run there. We was running 24 flats, and he's running 2340s right there. So all we need to do is, all we need to do is just uh, keep our tires a little bit cool, and I believe we can hold them off. Well, this caution is certainly helping that. Uh, they, they think they can hang on, Ralph. Well, Glenn, early on, the big question for Wimmer was going to be on fuel. All these cautions are definitely helping him make it to the finish on fuel. He says if they get enough green flag laps going, he can hunt him and get him. He's not worried about it as long as they can go green. So the thoughts of the crew for the top two, and you've got John Wood still doing a great job in that Roush car in third, followed by Greg Biffle, Tony Raines, and Jason Keller. The problem is, you know, Scott Wimmer, the 23 car, was talking about needing a lot of laps. We're only going to have about 15 laps to go in the race. Getting one to go here, BP, at 18 to go, so the restart's going to come... Well, they get one to go at 17 to go. The restart will come at 16 to go. Okay, call me a liar for one lap, right? I'm just, ba I'm just <laughs> backing you up. Oh, big kid, big kid. Tough crowd tonight. <laughs> All right, who's going to win it? The guys on the fresh tires or the guys on the old tires? I don't know. I'm sentimentally, I'm rooting for the guys that took tires. I'm, I'm applauding the guys that took a chance to take a, a risk of winning the race versus just staying there in second and third. I, I want to see those guys get through the pack of the can and at least race for the win here. I think the time Biffle gets by, if he can get by the 9 car and 23 car, the race will be over. I can't see him passing all those cars to win. I think the 23 car is the key to the whole thing. If he thinks he's got enough for Riggs, then, then that 60 car is going to have some trouble yeah. dealing with him. That could get exciting. Maybe some more of those pristine fenders go by the wayside. 